Hey folks, welcome to the fifth in a series of six videos where we look at the key definitions that you need to know for the higher physics exam. In this video we cover the definitions for the first half of the particles and waves topic and I'd recommend that you make your own flashcards from these definitions. You can do this by writing down the word or term on one side and the definition or the meaning on the other side. So let's get started. The first definition is for electric field. An electric field is a region of space around a charge where another charge will experience a force. Next we have voltage, also known as potential difference, and this is the energy given to each coulomb of charge that passes through a power supply. Remember this is identical to the definition for EMF or electromotive force from the electricity topic. Moving on we have the standard model, and this is a model used for classifying, i.e. sorting, fundamental particles and their interactions. So it's a bit like the periodic table for elements but for particles. Next we have a fundamental particle, and this is a particle that is not made up from any other particles, it is in its simplest form. Fundamental particles are also known as fermions or matter particles. Next we have beta decay, and beta decay is a type of radioactive decay in which a beta particle, i.e. an electron, is emitted from the nucleus of an atom. During beta decay, a neutron decays to give a proton, electron and antineutrino. Moving on we have a composite particle which is opposite to a fundamental particle, and this is a particle that is made up of other particles, it is not a fundamental particle. Moving on we have the hadron, and a hadron is a composite particle that is made up of quarks. There are two types of hadrons which are baryons and mesons. Which brings us to the baryon, which is a type of hadron that consists of three quarks, for example a proton or neutron. And baryons are stable particles, so remember protons are made up of two up quarks and one down quark, and a neutron is made from one up quark and two down quarks. Next we have the meson, which is a type of hadron that consists of two quarks and a quark-antiquark -quark pair, for example a pion. Mesons are unstable and have a short lifetime. Moving on we have radioactive decay, which is when unstable nuclei emit nuclear radiation in the form of an alpha particle, beta particle or gamma ray in an attempt to become more stable. Next we have nuclear fission, which was seen at National 5 level, and this is the process in which an unstable, heavy atomic nucleus splits into two or more lighter nuclei called fission fragments with energy being released. And remember a chain reaction can occur as a result of a nuclear fission reaction, where neutrons released in nuclear fission reactions can go on to hit other nuclei and the cycle repeats. Nuclear fusion is our next one, and this is the process of small nuclei joining together to form a larger nucleus with energy being released. So you can think about fusion as almost being the opposite to fission, where instead of a nucleus splitting apart, we have two smaller nuclei joining together. A problem associated with nuclear fusion reactors, remember, is plasma containment, and this is the use of powerful magnetic fields to prevent the high temperature plasma from physically touching and therefore melting any parts of the reactor. Moving on we have irradiance, and this is the power per unit area of electromagnetic radiation instant on a surface. And remember this is shown by the relationship I equals P over A for irradiance on the relationship sheet. Next we have the photoelectric effect, in which photoelectrons are ejected from the surface of a metal when photons of light with sufficient energy are instant on the surface. This provides evidence for the particle model of light. Associated with the photoelectric effect is the threshold frequency, and this is the minimum frequency of a photon required to cause the emission of photoelectrons from a metal surface. Also associated with the photoelectric effect is the work function, which is the minimum energy of a photon required to cause the emission of photoelectrons from a metal surface. So notice how similar this definition is to the threshold frequency, but we're no longer talking about minimum frequency, we're talking about minimum energy, because work function is an energy. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.